Yeah, you know, it's a big night. Last <laughs> Sunday at this time, the Ohio State men's basketball team was unranked and off to a less than spectacular start to Big Ten play. Hello, everybody. I'm Dom Tiberi, and welcome to Wall to Wall Sports. And I'm, I'm Bo Bishop, and oh, how things can change in just a week. Two huge conference wins for the Bucks and almost a lock to be back in the top 25 on Monday. To talk about the big week in Buckeye basketball, we are joined in studio by the three amigos, Evan Turner, David Lighty, John Diebler. National Signing Day fast approaching. For the latest on that, we have our buddy Tim May of the Columbus Dispatch. And, uh, you know, everyone's smiling tonight, not because, uh, just because the Buckeyes are here, but because we've got some great food in the grill. Thanks to our buddies from Tumbleweed, and man, they did it right. Take a look at that stuff. Outstanding food here, thanks to Tumbleweed. Unbelievable spread. We begin with Buckeye basketball. Easily the two most impressive wins of the season have come in the last week. Tuesday's thrilling win over Purdue, followed by Saturday's home win over Wisconsin. Safe to say that whatever ailed Ohio State no longer does. Things looking pretty good as we bring on our guys. Welcome, gentlemen. What a treat to have you all here. Oh, thanks, thanks for having, having us. us. Man, they look good. You guys clean up good. They look good and down here. and. Uh, Everything's uh, right with the world right now, uh, with you guys at least. Two big wins. Just Evan, what's it do to this club's confidence to be able to, A, then take it to Purdue, and then yesterday take it to Wisconsin? I just think it uh, gives us, you know, a little bit of momentum going into, you know, our next game. You know, it gives us confidence and shows, you know, what hard work and faith does. We never uh, put our head down when we went under 500, and, you know, we're just, we're just in it for the long haul. So it's just a real blessing to get those two wins. Dave and John, you guys had to play some without Ev. Obviously, you're a lot better team when he's there. But I'm wondering how much that helped you in Saturday's game when the big guy here gets in a little foul trouble and you guys were able to actually extend the lead. How much did you learn playing without him for a couple games? Uh, well, I think that was uh, something that kind of prepared us for the situation. Uh, you know, him getting hurt, you know, it's not a good thing. But uh, it made all of us on the team step up our game and uh, do things we might not have been doing, you know, in the past. But uh, him getting in foul trouble uh, in the Wisconsin game uh, kind of, you know, got us back to that mode when he wasn't playing and, uh, and it prepared us for that situation. Hey, John, you guys in, in a situation uh, in Saturday against Wisconsin with extending a lead. Uh, how comforting was it to know that, you know, you guys, you guys always play a lot of minutes, obviously, but knowing that when the big guy's out, you guys can extend a lead and can still play very good basketball. It was very comforting just because, uh, like Dave said, when Evan went out early on in the season, we had to uh, take our game to another level and guys really stepped up and made plays and then you know we were used to that situation when he got in foul trouble but then again when you bring him back in the game we're just that much better it's a lot easier right it yeah. is. <laughs> and where's your head obviously it, it was a scary injury to watch and you know thank goodness you're a quick healer uh, you're back sooner than later but mentally where's your head do you, do you have all the confidence now that you're, you're okay uh, most definitely I don't really worry about the injury anymore you know uh, I'm fortunate enough to, you know, know that, you know, I'm back 100%, and unless a freak accident occurs again, I can't really hurt my back again. And, uh, you know, back out there with my teammates, I have a lot of confidence, and, you know, I've been doing basketball for a long time, so it's one thing I know I'm good at. So. How, how tough? I mean, you, you, you seem like a guy that feels like, hey, man, it's off my shoulders, I'm back. How tough was it when you were watching it, and, and you were almost like a coach on the sideline? Uh, it was pretty tough, you know, especially uh, watching losses. It was really tough, you know. I wanted to be out there, you know, help my teammates, but really couldn't. But I just tried to help them the best way I could and just, you know, stay positive and uh, keep the faith. I want to go over this last week with you guys, starting with Purdue. And I, I want candor here because Robbie Hummel's hitting threes like he's Larry Bird in a three-point contest. Mm -hmm. How's that in the locker room at halftime uh, uh, with Mr. Hummel uh, with the win at Purdue? He was, um, he's real chill. I think we're all chill. We just, like, we just hit eight threes. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like, what yeah. is that about? Well, you got the job of uh, shutting him down and did a, a miraculous job of that in that second half, Dave. I mean, I had a little help with it. Uh, yeah. I think it was a big team effort on, on the defense end in the second half. Uh, first half, uh, we played great defense. Uh, just him hitting all those threes out of nowhere was a little unexpected from us. You know, he was shooting like 28% or something <laughs> like that from the three-point line. But, I mean, he was hot that night, and it's, it's something that you really can't control. But uh, I think in the second half, we stepped up our game, and, and like Evan said, we stayed mentally tough and uh, pulled out the victory. Yeah, Evan, you had, what, a career-high 32-23 in the second half. What was going through your head? Uh, I mean, you said, the, the, the heck with it, we're going to take care of this? Uh, we just, you know, all try to stay poised and uh, stay calm. We knew there's a lot more basketball we made, uh, play. You know, my coaches, you know, called a lot of plays for me, and uh, I was fortunate enough to hit shots, and, you know, my teammates hit big shots, and we were just all sticking together, and uh, I didn't want to let them down. 
John, how sweet was it to get the revenge on Wisconsin? Uh, you put it on you guys pretty good and probably your worst effort of the year. Don't want to bring up all the bad memories, but certainly to flip the script and get it done on Saturday. It felt really good, and I think what was the good thing about it was we just played so well as a team that game, you know, having everybody healthy. And like you said, they, they beat us pretty good there in Wisconsin. So, you know, they're a very good basketball team, and I thought we played a very – we did a very good job both offensively and defensively as a team. And, you know, when we're playing like that, we're pretty hard to beat. David, it's going to be a fun week beginning with Northwestern on Tuesday, a club that's playing with a lot of confidence. They just knocked Purdue off. And, and, and they don't run your normal type uh, 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 basketball program, do they? I mean, as far as what they're going to do on the court. Yeah, they, they play a little different style from uh, everyone else in the Big Ten. Uh, they like to slow things down and, you know, play the 1-3-1 one, one, uh, defense and backdoor you on offense and, and things of that nature. So. I mean, it's working for them right now. You know, they have, like, the best record that they had in school history. You know, looking to make the tournament for the first time in school history. And uh, like you said, they, they had a big win versus Purdue as well. So they're riding a high right now. So we have to prepare and be ready for them coming uh, to our home court. And that's kind of a crazy week for you guys because you get with Northwestern with the way that they play, that Princeton offense. Then you got to turn around and go to West Virginia. It, it's going to be probably completely opposite. They'll try to try to force tempo, increase the speed. Is it fun to play two totally different opponents in one week? I mean, it's cool. I think it's just fun to play basketball. And, you know, that's not really how I worry about how they play. It's how you play, yeah. how you execute things and uh, what you're ready for. We're just going to try to take uh, the game in our hands and play the way we want to play. And that's all that matters. It's going to be a slugfest on Saturday, though, John. I look forward to that one. I mean, we, we can only get ahead of ourselves with Tuesday, but, I mean, Saturday's going to be fun. Yeah, I mean, West Virginia's a very good basketball team. And they, they took it to us last year pretty good on our home court. <laughs> so I know we'll be ready to play. And they just came off a home loss, so... You know, they're going to be excited to play, and their fans are going to be wild. So it'll be, it'll be a good atmosphere there. Real quick, all three of you, before we go, just a couple sentences each. What does this club need to work on between now and March to be, become a, a, a tournament-tested team, a team that can make some noise in the tournament? Well, me, uh, <laughs> no, you go first. Of course, me. You, you, you said you were grandpa. <laughs> I'm, I'm grandpa, but uh, me, I'm a defensive guy, of course, so just defense, defense, defense. To me, you know, defense wins games. Defense starts your offense. Defense gets the crowd into it. So just being high energy and uh, playing hard and playing good defense. Uh, uh -uh. Me next. <laughs> go ahead, Jeff. Uh, I think just the little things, you know, rebounding, you know, being sharper on offense and then staying sound on defense, like Dave said, because you know, they say defense wins championships, and I think our offense is very good. It certainly is. And do you really need to say anything? You just keep showing up like you're doing. We're going to be fine, right? Um, Triple double every uh, day. Stay healthy. Yeah, I stay healthy, but definitely I just think it's, it's a team thing. You know, I want to be able to do what I'm doing without my teammates. But uh, one thing I think we can all agree on is just the leadership. You know, when things get tough, to keep our poise and. Uh, we know the rest of our team is going to really go the way we go. So just the poise and uh, the body language and stuff is going to really be key and uh, really guide, guide our teammates through tough situations and tough times. And uh, that's the biggest thing. You made your debut. This was fun. Huh? The other two guys have been here. Yeah, man, that's my first time. Thanks, gentlemen. Good time. stuff as always. And uh, it's a fun year. It's going to be a fun week for you guys. Switching gears to Buckeye football now. Yeah, our buddy Tim May, he's in the bullpen ready to talk some Buckeye recruiting. Water Wall Sports will be right back. Oh my goodness, does the tumbleweed that look good tonight? Now that's what I'm talking about, some great looking ribs. We want to thank our friends from Tumbleweed and welcome back to Water Wall Sports. Joined now by Tim May, the Columbus Dispatch, to talk a little Buckeye football. I'm ready recruiting. to get grilled. I'm ready to get grilled. <laughs> I'm sorry. National Signing Day is February 3rd and uh, Tim, the Buckeyes get what their 17th commitment last week, uh, a uh, receiver slash cornerback, probably cornerback in uh, Bradley Roby from Swanee, Georgia, the same school that uh, our buddy uh, Cam Hayward went to. Yeah. Uh, you said it's a big get. I don't know if I call it a, you know, I don't know. I don't well, remember you said it was being a big quoted get. as saying it was a but big get, but uh, it's, an inter it. it's an interesting get because this is a guy who basically had rated by a lot of people in the uh, cornerback ranks uh, nationally. Uh, he, he really just started playing cornerback this past season, but he's six foot, 180 pounds, runs about a 4'3", 4'3", 5'4", 4'4", Kind of reminds me of another guy who was uh, lightly regarded coming out of high school by the name of Daryl Revis about uh, six years ago. Did you just go there? Daryl Revis. Yeah, and he ends up, I think he may be the best cornerback in, in uh, pro football right now. But my point is, this guy is a uh, is, a, is an up-and-coming uh, player who, uh, who the, uh, Paul Haynes especially, has looked at very hard from the high State staff. All right. Well, they I really like him as a cornerback. So it is a big get. 
Well, this is, my question, Tim May. this is my question. I Who was Timmy Chuckwell when they recruited him? I, I, know, I know that I, lo I look at on this kid, and the thing I notice about kids coming from the South is who also offered them. Yeah. No offer from Georgia, no offer from Florida, yeah. no offer from Alabama or LSU. He was going to Vanderbilt because he, he saw himself as a wide receiver coming out of his junior year. Uh, his head coach and other people talked him into playing cornerback because they thought he had the big ups for cornerback. The guy has a 40-inch vertical. He's a tall guy for a cornerback, six feet tall. I mean, here I am selling him to you guys. I mean, bottom line it's your is job too, right? Auburn, all these other teams jumped in on him after he showed himself as having, uh, the, uh, having the ups to play cornerback, especially a big cornerback. And uh, there I say Ohio State got him. All right, Tim. Uh, uh, Cleveland Glenville defensive back Christian Bryant, uh, yeah. wide receiver also. Looks like he might be close to making a decision. Where are the Buckeyes? No, they him? may end up getting uh, two really, what they think, two really good uh, uh, prospective uh, corners out of this group in the last three weeks. And uh, Christian Brown's one of them. He visited North Carolina this week, and there's some talk that uh, he really liked North Carolina. But I think everyone thinks in two weeks when he makes his, he's going to make his announcement probably after next weekend, after his last final visit, uh, official visit, he's probably going to pick Ohio State. All right, we got no real news on Chantrell Henderson at this point, but right. Jordan Hex, you talked to the coach, you get less than 30 in the segment. Your, your gut feeling after talking to the coach? You know, I, I don't, I think Jordan Hicks could go to anywhere of three places, Florida, Ohio State, or Texas. And uh, as, uh, you know, one of the national recruiting guys told me this past week, whenever Texas and Florida come into Ohio for a guy, they're serious, better look out. Uh, a lot of people think at the end he's going to end up at Ohio State. I think that's a toss-up. Chantrell Henderson, it looks like a uh, big offensive lineman from uh, St. Paul, Minnesota. It looks like he's leaning to Ohio State. But Florida's knocking, and so is USC with its revamped coaching staff. National Signing Day information from him. Great stuff always, Tim. Always, yes. See you next Appreciate week. It, right? Enjoyed it. All right. Things not so good for the Blue Jackets on the ice, Tom. Yeah, not so good on the ice, but uh, with uh, off the ice, they were doing some good stuff today. We'll show you what they were doing when Walla Wall Sports returns. Hey, we want to thank Tumbleweed for bringing down some great food tonight. You know, the Columbus Blue Jackets... Losing 6-5 at home to Chicago yesterday. Jackets have now lost three straight. And, you know, Bo, this was after they won three in a row. Yeah, I know. It's like, here we go again. This team with the fourth worst record of the NHL. And it seems whenever they get one deficiency figured out, another emerges. For most of the past month, they've had trouble scoring goals. How they are once again now having trouble giving them up. Fact is, this team not very good right now. And they're running out of time to get the ship righted. You want to trust yourself. You want to trust the team. And and play hard at the same time you don't want to over uh, overlook uh, the big picture you want to you want to get better every day and if you do you'll uh, you'll have success you know we got to be a team if we're going to really go after something we got to put some streaks together we got to put a good winning mentality together and uh, you know there's stuff we got to work on we got to get better if we're going to be that team all right speaking of the blue jackets they are the subject of our donato's delivery of the day we caught up with some of the players and asked them who would play you in a movie about the blue jackets uh, probably, you know, I'm a modest guy, so I'll have to say Brad Pitt, probably. <laughs> nice. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I have no idea. It's a good question. The Rock. It's a good question. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Broussard kind of looks like he'd be a movie star a little bit. Uh, now, why would such a question be asked? Not because of tonight's Golden Globes. Obviously, I didn't write this lead in. Our producer, Katie Logan, did who loves that stuff. Today, we caught up with Broussard, Derek Dorsett, and Mark Mathot taking in a screening of the Tooth Fairy at the Arena Grand. Joining them were nearly 200 members of the Big Brothers and Big Sisters program in Central Ohio. It's always good to come out and, you know, uh, put your time in back into the community, and uh, it's just going to be a fun event to have, uh, you know, the Big Brothers and Big Sisters here to, to watch this movie with us. To have, those, have the Big Brothers and Big Sisters um, groups out here today is something that we love to do, and, and, and to be able to see them and spend a little time, whether it be signing autographs or pictures and just talking to them. Looks like it was a fun day over at the movie theater. We got to take a quick break. What a Wall Sports will be right back. Hey, if you'd like to be a member of our Walter Wall Sports Studio audience, it's easy. Just go to 10TV.com, click on Sports, go to the Wall to Wall link, fill out the form, and you can be down here uh, hanging out with us eating tumbleweed, which, uh, you know, an outstanding food tonight. This may have been the perfect show. The Buckeyes were great. Tim May was Tim May. Tumbleweed yeah. was fantastic. You and I, well, we do pretty good. We're all right. Yeah. That's going to do it. Hey, we want to thank you for watching. We'll see you all next week. Good night, everyone.